Okay, I hope this is straight now. This is David again. I'm coming to uh, give you a second lesson on what we had in the previous lesson. In the previous lessons, you may not be there. You may not have seen the previous lesson, but we were talking about the six-day hour. And this whole process, the six-day hour, covered six chapters. John chapter 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. That's six chapters. And we were talking about the six-day hour the sixth day hour. And Jesus told his disciples in that lesson in the book of John that the hour had come for him to go away. And if he go not away, he would not be able, the comforter would not come. And if he go away, the comforter would come. His father, the Holy Spirit would come and live in you and I. And we then will have the right to have the eternal life that he came to give us. And before he would give it to us, he had to go away. And going away means that he had to die. And that's what this Sunday school lesson is for this whole process, the Sunday school lesson for today's class. And what we are trying to do in all of these lessons or Sunday school lessons is to just give a synopsis of what the scripture is all about. And we're taking information directly from the Bible. Now, before I get too far gone in this process, I want to uh, go through this recording and recite the Lord's Prayer. And then in his prayer, he prayed after he had told his disciples that it had to go away. Then he then finished the part of, of John chapter 16, and we're going to share that in a few minutes. But he prayed in chapter 17, verse 1 through 26. He prayed to the Father, saying, Father, the hour has come to glorify your Son, that your Son may also glorify you, as you have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is life eternal, that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, of whom we have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work for which you gave me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify you, me, with your own self, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. So I manifest your name unto the men which you gave me out of the world, yours they were, and you gave them men. They have kept your word, and now they have known that all things whatsoever you have given me are of you. For I have given unto them the words which you gave me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from you, and have believed that you did send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which you have given me, for they are yours, and all yours are mine, and all mine are thine, and I am glorified in them, and now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your own name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. So I was with them in the world. I kept them in your name. Those that you gave me, I kept, and none of them are lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture may be fulfilled. And now come out to you in these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. So I've given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even if I'm not of the world. And I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil. Evil. They are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world, and sanctify them through your truth, and your word is truth. If you have sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they may be sanctified through the truth. And neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they may be one in us, and that the world may believe that you have sent me, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that the world may be, that they may be perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and to have loved them as you have loved me. And Father, I will that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory for which you have given me, before you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you did send me, and I have declared unto them your name, and will declare it, that the love for with may be in them, and I in them. So that's now we pray in the prayer that Jesus Christ prayed before we died, and I'm going to reiterate just in case we remind you that what you see on the screen now in this classroom setting, because it is a classroom, it is a Sunday school lessons for today's class and I'm giving you the classroom picture in two times in this presentation just to inferentiate that this is about a lesson, a Sunday school lesson for today's class and we're taking it from the Bible. You see the Bible class because we're taking information directly from the Bible and it's a Sunday school lesson but the lesson is coming from the Bible. What you see in the blue on my left side, your right side, you'll see Father that I was come to glorify your Son that your Son may also glorify you as you have given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. Well that is what this lesson is based upon. The two times that Jesus recited 
to not just his father, but also to his disciples to let you and I know that the father that had sent him, that he's letting his disciples and his father know that the hour had come for him to die. And that hour in our previous lesson, and I hope you can go back and get that lesson, took six days. It was a six day hour. And we're going to reiterate that in this prayer. But this prayer really is about the two times and what he came to do was to introduce you and I to the hour that it took him to go back to the Father, to die for you and I, and go back to the Father. We're going to cover that in just a minute. We're going to go on with this now to show you what we're talking about. On the left side of this slide, you'll see the book of David, and we're talking about the hours come. That is the whole sole purpose of this lesson in this lesson is entitled the hour is come whereas the previous lesson and you can see that on the screen also is a six day hour and then the six day hour dot com is where you can go to get an understanding of what we're talking about in the six day hour but also in this lesson you're going to be able to see that that the hour is come and on the bottom of the book of david you see the book of david youtube video all of the lessons sunday school lessons are uploaded onto that those videos and you can see any lesson at any day any time and hope to share all these lessons with as many people as possible in order to over change what's in the world you cannot change the world but god through prayer can change the world and what he's i'm emphasizing this lesson is is that the son jesus christ is praying to the father for you and i to have eternal life and God answers all prayer, specifically his son's prayer, who prayed for you and I in this six day process that it took him to die. It took six days for him to die, but the hour did come for him to have to die. And he went through some changes and we're going to show that in a few minutes, the changes that he went through before he died for you and I. But the purpose for him to come was to give you and I eternal life. That's the importance of all of these Sunday school lessons that for you and I to understand that he came to give us eternal life and our life cannot be eternal because our living soul that's in us are dead and we should cover that in all the lessons and we're definitely going to try to cover that in this lesson now i want to apologize to you right now because i i do get particularly a horse when i do these lessons and i'm going to be sipping water i have a, a bottle of water here and i have straws in order for me to sip water as I go through this lesson. And I'm going to be doing that in this. And I'm going to apologize before I do it and go forward. Okay. So now look. We have on the screen now two pictures. And that picture said worth a thousand words in my book. The book of David. That's me. My name is David. And I am the author uh, of the, the book of David. In the book of David. You cannot read the book of David. It only reads you. And you can see at the bottom. And put it in the purple and the yellow. The book of David YouTube video. So what we're doing is uploading all the lessons in the video form. So you can actually listen at the lessons. And you can also follow the lessons. Because all the lessons going to contain the Bible itself. Now my I use the King James Version of the Bible. Bible, but I just left a real powerful presentation or pre preaching from the Bible and it was coming from the new revised version of the King James Bible. So it doesn't really matter what Bible you use. It's going to be the Holy Spirit presenting that information. Now we're going to move on with this, uh, move on to this to show you <clears throat> in this process where we're using these six chapters that took place during the six days that it took Jesus to come the hour had come and this lesson is encompassing the hour now, now let's talk about the right side of this picture this uh, slide 12 o'clock is what you see but the hour had come for jesus to die and he let his disciples know that the hour had come and then during that whole uh, t teaching of the disciples then he turned to his father to say father he prayed to he prayed the prayer he's praying a prayer what i just recited was the lord's prayer he prayed to his father and the first thing he said to his father was that the hour had come for him to die and he had to go to the father and didn't want to the male side of the human side of him didn't want to die but he had to do it in order for you and i to have the eternal life that he came to give us the eternal life now let me for those who of you who may not have ever studied the bible i'm gonna leave this here while i explain this but that i was studied the bible when eve adam and eve when god uh, formed adam he breathed into adam the breath of life 
life in the living soul start living inside of Adam. So for over 500 years, Adam was on the earth as the only human being on the earth, naming all the things that was in the Garden of Eden that God put him there specifically for that purpose, to name things, and then God... <coughs> said himself that he had to, was on once should not be alone so he made him a help meet which is eve and he took eve out of adam's side and now adam which had the living soul inside of him and god took eve out of his living soul so now eve also had a living soul coming out of adam so now but eve was deceived or or beguiled as she said by the serpent and then she took from the fruit that God had told Adam not to take from the tree and eat and she took from the tree what the serpent told her she should take because her mind would be open and it was so she took the uh, the uh, fruit from the tree that was in the garden the tree of uh, good and evil and she ate it and her soul died and then she gave it to Adam and his soul died. Now they had a living dead soul is what we're trying to emphasize in this process. And the time had come for Jesus to die, to take back, to give you and I back a living soul that will live for eternal, that live for eternal. But our soul would not live, our souls are going to live eternal. But what Jesus came back for is for the kingdom of God, to, to give our living soul the kingdom of paradise of God to live in as opposed to living in the pit. If we don't accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then our soul that lives and living will live into the pit eternally as opposed to living in paradise eternally in the kingdom of Jesus Christ and also in the kingdom of God and I'm going to use this example for your children if you don't have children if you were in a mother and father and you had a home in your parents house single or plural in your parents house you had uh, your own room and now Jesus Christ has his own kingdom in his father's kingdom and he is praying to his father for all those whom you have given me to have eternal life in the king, in his kingdom, in his kingdom with God. We're going to move on with this and we're going to get in more into depth of this as we go through the scriptures. I just wanted to highlight what we're talking about in these first two slides. Now, here is the scripture that we're talking about. Now, on the left side of this page, this is one whole page, two pages, but on the left side, we'll give an information about and from the, the books in the Bible that where he's talking about the hour is come. And you see the books that referencing the hour is at hand, for an example, in Matthew 26, 45, instead of using the hour at hand, Matthew used the hour is at hand. And you can go on down and then you look uh, in the same process you see that mark in 1441 he's using said the hour is come you see what i'm talking about so each one of these persons that jesus is christ is praying about in his prayer so so he said that for neither do i uh, for, for live alone but those also whom you have given the word so the word that god gave to the disciples of jesus is what we're seeing now john mark john all these peter these were the, uh, these were disciples of jesus and jesus gave them the word to give you and i so if we believe on them and their word then we believe what jesus is talking about now what john is talking about here is that the and the top i put it on the right side of this and we're starting now in the 16th chapter of the book of john and we're going to go all the way we're back through the 21st chapter of the book of john which encompasses the whole six days for this hour that jesus is praying about he said to his father the hour is come said jesus the hour is coming. You can see that starting in the book of John. But the reason why we starting here or in the previous lesson, we talk about the expedience of Jesus. And Jesus is telling it is expedient for you, not, not for him, as we may have thought, but expedient for you that I go away. If I don't go away, then you can't gain eternal life. If I don't go away, then your soul is going to live inside of the pit for eternity. If I go away and send a comforter back who is going to instruct you on how to live and how to gain eternal life then you are going to gain eternal life by accepting me as your lord and savior and now you are going to be able to have a living soul in paradise for eternity so you're going to live in eternity what well, you came out of eternity when god breathed the breath of life into adam and he became a living soul that was the from eternity and when you leave your body that god breathed the breath of life into your body for it to be inside of your body to be a living soul when your body dies your living soul will continue to live in paradise with jesus christ and or in the pit that 
has already been prepared for us and we'll see that when we go through other lessons but the pit is filled with people even people from not on the earth it is filled with the sons of god for an example who came to the earth and caused god to be grieved back up in Genesis chapter 6, you'll see that God said he was grieved that he had made mankind because mankind had now had been in fulfilled, in, in fulfilled by the evil of the sons of God. And see that in Second Peter. Also, the sons of God are the falling angels in Second Peter and also in the book of Jude. They came to the earth and made it with the women of the earth as many as they want in Genesis chapter 6 verse 1 4 through 13 they married the women of the earth and had offspring and those offspring didn't know if they were male female or what and then immortality trying to mate with mortality and grieve God so that he destroyed that with water so now what we're doing now is trying to overcome what was done back in the past with our living souls that our souls can live in eternity in the life of in the paradise of Jesus Christ and that's what is being so shown here in all this yellow <clears throat> and the expedience go back and make sure you go look into the Sunday school lesson concerning the expediency and it, it, it is expedient Jesus Christ said and right here in the book of John I highlight this and nevertheless I tell you the truth it is expedient for you that I go away for if I go not away the comforter will not come unto you but if I depart I will send him unto you and he and when he comes he will reprove the world and you can stop this and read it for yourself because that was in a previous lesson and you can go to that lesson also and his and uh, see what is called the expedience of Jesus Christ and you can do that but in this lesson here we're talking about what Jesus is now praying to the father about he's saying that the hour is come and now that the hour is come Jesus Christ father the comforter the holy spirit of god who overshadowed mary the virgin back up in P, uh, mark and i'm sorry matthew chapter 17 where he overshadowed mary the virgin and she conceived jesus christ and that's what we're talking about now that's the comforter so jesus christ has now made it expedient for him to go away so that the comforter would come and give you and i the instructions as to how to again gain the eternal life that jesus died for after he prayed then jesus died after he prayed the prayer for the hour to come and let us know that the hour had come so he died on calvary and gave up his spirit and then they came and pierced him in his side and out of his side came blood and water to bear witness for you and i that we now are going to accept jesus christ his spirit blood and water and those are our witnesses that we've done that and that's what we're trying to present in this class here what was showing about that the hour has come and we're going to move on with this as you can see again the subject of this lesson is is at the top the, the, is the time is come jesus christ said the time is come jesus christ said the hour is come the hour is come if that's what we're talking about now moving on now we are still in chapter uh 16 and we're looking at chapter 16 as we did in the previous lesson which was entitled the, the experience of Jesus Christ and what we're showing in this lesson here is a basically the same information that we showed in the previous lesson but the only difference is what we're highlighting in this lesson is to let us know that the hour all this is now the hour the hour has now gotten started back up in Genesis I'm, I'm sorry back up in uh, John 1 verse 1 is to let us know that the hour has now gotten started and now uh jesus christ is now within that hour but now an hour was six days remember that the hour was six days so prior to the prayer of him telling his father that the hour had come you can see that's in right here in this on the left side of this slide here where 17 verse 1 through verse 17 26 and the next thing jesus so you see that jesus looking at his father's uh, uh looking up into heaven in 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 his eyes in the in the heaven lifted up his eyes to heaven and said father the hour has come to glorify your son that your son may also glorify you as you have given him power of all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him and this is life eternal they may know you the only true god and jesus christ on whom we have sent so i've glorified you on the earth i have finished the work for which you gave me to do and now oh father glory Glorify you me with your own self with the glory which I have with you before the world was. Well, now that's the prayer that 
message. I'm going to say it again. Jesus Christ is praying now to his father and the hour is already started. Now, the hour started when he told his disciples that the hour had come. But now he's now praying in the same hour. He's praying to the father to let him know that the hour had come. But now we're going through this process to show you that the hour came, but it was over a period of six days. That's what we are talking about. I'm going to take a drink of water but and let you understand and get a comprehensive of what we're we talking about. And notice in this now, <clears throat> Jesus is praying. This is a prayer. Uh, well, we haven't gotten to the prayer yet, but we're still in uh, uh, chapter 16. And we're looking at chapter 16. He said, I will, I, what Jesus is letting you and I know in this process, and this is very important, that let, let's look at and what he said, and he said, uh, <clears throat> sorry, verse 27, 16, 27, saying, In that day you shall ask of me nothing. Truly, truly, I say unto you, whosoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. So we won't ask what we should be asking the Father for is to forgive us every day of the sin. Because every day that we get up and have a breath of life in our body, we commit a sin because the adversary never sleeps. The adversary constantly is trying to get you to kill you. He wants to kill you, the adversary does, and he never stops going against you to try and stop you from doing something that you should not be doing or to get you to do something that you should not be doing. And he doesn't want you to go to the Father for what Jesus Christ is saying. Here, truly, truly, I say unto you that whosoever you shall ask in the Father, asking the Father. Who is the Father? That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives inside. So when you pray to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit hears every prayer you say. The Holy Spirit is constantly fighting off the enemy against you. And the Holy Spirit talks to you at 24-7 and never stops talking. Even when you dream, <laughs> you can have what's called a nightmare or a dream. And and, and we go going to dream dreams, uh, God and told the word is saying. And those dreams sometimes are not favorable dreams. But the adversary, the devil, <clears throat> the king of pride, he's the one that's constantly trying to get you. Uh, to, to go against the kingdom of God. He's forever against God. And he works on you 24-7. But God's never sleep. God is always talking to you. All eight plus billion people in the world, God talks to them all at the same time. He never tells any two of them the same thing at the same time. It's just like he has all eight plus billion people in the world with different fingerprints. He has all eight billion people in the world with different revelations from him, if you can understand the principle of what I'm saying. So now here we now here in this 16th chapter of the book of John and the hour working in this hour and we're going to now show that what he said I will pray the father so what he's saying back up in talking in verse 27 going our way down to through what we're looking at here in the yellow and then I will pray the father for you Jesus Christ is praying so when I pray or when you pray Jesus Christ hears our prayer and he prayed the father it's amazing you ask Jesus, the Lord have mercy. Let's use that for an example. You can just say, Lord have mercy. Well, then Jesus then turns to his father and said, Lord have mercy. But his father has already interceded, but for you on your behalf to his son. Now, his father, the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, as we call him, the Holy Ghost, ask or uh, intercedes in a groaning that cannot be uttered, praying to his son, Jesus the Christ for you to have whatever it is you're asking for. And Jesus then tells you here, and we'll take a sip of water. <clears throat> Jesus tells us here that I will pray the Father. I will pray the Father. When you pray, you pray to the, my Father, the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> he in the said sees with your prayer, and he in the sees and pray me for you. And then I pray the King of glory for you. You see the connection. So when you pray, you actually hearing three prayers. You don't hear them. You pray one time yourself. You hear yourself pray, whether solidly or, or, uh, or verbally. You hear yourself pray. And then the Holy Spirit understands the prayer that you're praying. And then he prayed Jesus and Jesus prayed the Father. That's what we're trying to show in this, on the, for this hour is explaining to us in this hour that Jesus is now <clears throat> come for you and I to have what he come to give us which is eternal life. The Father, our is come. 
to have the eternal life for all those that you have given me. So what Jesus is letting you and I know that you are a gift to Jesus, but yet Jesus is a gift to you because if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you're going to inherit the glory that Jesus is talking about in his prayer two or three times. Father, I will that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am that they may uh, receive my glory. The glory that he gave Jesus, Jesus is going to ask him in the prayer to give you that same glory that he's given to his to his son. So that's what this lesson is encompassing is to understand that the hour is come and what's included in an hour, what you should know was six days. And in that six days is what you're going to now understand to share with other people. Now we're going to stay within John just for a few more minutes and then we're going to get into the prayer. But now look at John, if you would, please, I'm put my glasses on. You look at John and you can see now in verse, um, in, right here in John, he's talking to here. Look at verse, is that uh, 11? Jesus answers and said to them, do you now believe behold the hour is come yes is come you see now jesus christ is talking to the disciples and he's telling them that do you believe and if they if, if you do believe i'm talking to you you and especially you over there do you believe what we're saying now in this if you believe then he said the hour is come your hour is right now if you have not accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your hour is right this second. Wherever you are in this lesson, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your hour is come. That's what we're talking about. And if you believe, then your hour is come. If you have not, if you do not believe in Jesus Christ, then your hour has not come. I pray in Jesus name that you hear and understand and get comprehend what I'm saying here and for your hour to come. He's saying here in his this lesson, talking to his disciples, that the hour has come. Now, he's not praying to the Father yet. He's telling the disciples, behold, the hour, the hour comes. It's here now. The hour comes, is now come that you shall be scattered every one of you and you shall leave me alone and yet i'm not alone he said because the father he talking about his holy spirit his father the holy spirit is with me this these things i have spoken unto you that you might be have peace you might have peace jesus is talking to them you might have peace and he's now getting them the last thing he's going to tell them before he pray you see, all this is a last word into him before he prayed and to let you, you and especially you know that the hour had come for him to to die. Now he's going to start praying and he's going to pray the same thing to the father that he just told you and I, and we uh, the people. And he's talking to his disciples now. He, he's telling this to his disciples. And in this prayer, he's going to be reminded, you and I are going to be reminded, if we believe on the words that he's told to his disciples, we can be, we're going to have the same thing. Because now he has taught his disciples for over three years. He has taught his disciples what the Father sent him to do. And that's what we say in his prayer. He's letting you and I know that the Father has sent him to teach the disciples who are now teaching you and I in his word we call Bible. They are disciples and all of the prophets and all of the, the uh, persons in the Bible are now teaching us what apostles and the prophets and preachers and teachers and ministers and all these persons are now teaching us what God has now put into his word. And first, this son is the word put into the word for you and I to get out of the word. And if we believe Jesus said in here, the hour is come. If you believe when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the hour is come. Is that what we're talking about? Yes, that's what we're talking about. Once you accept him, hey, if, one, if you accept him, all you, know, you ever do is accept him one time. He's not going to disinvolve you. <laughs> you may leave him. After you accept him, you may you may walk from him. No human being has is perfect. There's no and God has no respect of persons. He doesn't he doesn't have a respect of persons. When you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your witness, the Comforter, who He has sent back to you, your Comforter, His Father, know that you've accepted His Son as your Lord and Savior. Isn't that amazing? Even though you may not be mature enough to understand it, but He knows. 
that you have accepted his son and his son knows that you have accepted because he and his son are the same. He know that you have accepted him as your Lord and Savior. So now that your hour is come for you to continue in that hour, however many days it takes for you to do it. But in this process here, we're talking about but there's only these six chapters to cover these six days because after the 21st chapter in this Bible, we know that now Jesus is now ascended back into heaven to his father. We're going to move on with this now. And we're looking at John 17, 1 through 17, 26. It's Jesus Christ. This is his prayer that he's praying. And it's now we're within the hour. The hour is really functioning now. The hour is really functioning because now he's not alone any longer talking to the disciples, but he's talking to his father. And this part of the at the six days he's now praying to the father in this hour <laughs> it's the six days was a one hour and why i keep saying that if I, just in case you didn't hear it in the last lesson the bible in psalm 84 and in second peter is recorded in second peter chapter 3 verse 8 is that one hour with the lord is a thousand years one single hour with God is 1,000 of our years. If you and I were to live 1,000 years, which no one has ever done, if we were to live 1,000 years, we would only have lived one hour with God. So now this one hour that Jesus is praying about here in John, and this one hour that he's praying about in John 17, 1 through 26, is the hour was six days because the process from 8, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 verses, I mean, uh, uh, chapters in the Bible, covered six days. That's where I get the calculation from. Now, moving on with the prayer, Father, that I was coming to glorify your son, that your son may also glorify you as you have given him power of all flesh, as he shall give eternal life to as many as you have given him, as to as many as you have given him, to as many as you have given him. So, you see, if the eight plus billion people in the world now, so at one time before, after the flood, for an example, or immediately after the flood, before Abraham was uh, a grown man, the proper, proper uh, uh, second generation uh, had started. Fourteen, the second fourteen thousand generations had started. So now, from since that time up until now, we're talking about over eight billion people. So just uh, believe now that those eight plus billion people or more or less i don't know how many i'm just using it for an example in the world are now given to jesus christ if you accept jesus christ as your lord and savior regards to who you are god understands and you his spirit that lives inside of you already has testified in a groaning that cannot be uttered that you've accepted jesus christ as your lord and savior so regardless of who you are what race you are what gender you are what sins you've committed doesn't really matter because he's going to pardon all of the sins that you have committed. And now you are a new creature following Jesus Christ. And if you go and follow Jesus Christ's commandments and his statutes and all of the things that Jesus Christ has taught us to do, then we are going to inherit what Jesus Christ has inherited, which is that eternal life and receive that glory that Jesus has already received. That is what we're talking about in these lessons. So this lesson here is just like the other lessons that we've covered. It's only here to show us that the hour is come. And whenever we, you, I, me, whoever the human being is, that's the whoever has the flesh upon their body, except Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, their hour has come at that hour. There are persons, there are thousands and thousands of people from the Ishmael, and there are thousands and thousands of people from Isaac, and there are thousands and thousands of people from Jacob, and there are thousands and thousands of people from uh, uh, Esau, and there are thousands and thousands of people from the other six sons of Abraham, for an example. They are still on earth today, and who's one of each one of those persons except Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? The hour has come. <laughs> it is actually just that simple, whoever you are your hour will come. Now I'm going to move on and not going to go through the prayer like I have because there is a lesson, a Sunday school lesson on just the prayer. It's in the Lord's Prayer. You can go to that and it's in also go to the Book of David YouTube video, Book of David YouTube video, and you'll find the Lord's Prayer 
in the Sunday school lesson with the Lord's Prayer. And this is the Lord's Prayer you see here. You can stop this, this uh, slide here. You don't have to go to another slide. You can just stop this slide here and look at the 17 verse, uh, John 17, 1 through John 17, 26. And you see the whole prayer right here. And I got it in red. And it's also got yellow for my fingerprints in there. Because it said, um, neither do I pray for these alone. Now, that's what Jesus Christ is saying. Neither do I pray for these alone, but for them who will believe on me through their word. Who word? Talking about, the, talking about, he's talking about John. He's talking about Mark. He's talking about all the disciples if, 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 and the apostles and the prophets. If you believe on Jesus Christ through their word, that's what he was talking about right here in, in, a, in the 20th verse of, of uh, John uh, 17 through uh, 26. But he said, neither do I pray for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Talking about the disciples, the apostles, and, and etc. They may all be one as we are one. You see, in order for you and I to become one with Father, one with Son, one with Holy Spirit, which is God, then we become one with God. That's what he's praying in his prayer. And this is a prayer. And after he pray, he die. And after he die, they pierce him in his side. And after they pierce him in his side, blood and water comes out of his side. Now he has witnesses. He has three witnesses for you and I. Their blood and the water, there is there to restrain you and cleanse you and now the spirit is jesus christ's spirit and his connecting of the spirit is with his father the comforter if you can hear what i'm saying which is just one god and that one god now hears your prayer and he now works with you from that point on to your maturity so that when you can share now what you have learned and you have a command back up in the book of you've already been commanded to tell other persons about what you know now because you were lost but now you're found and by you exposing what you have gained to other people you go most often find other people who are lost and those lost souls now can become revived and have eternal life that's why it's not an option it's a commandment it's a command not a commandment but a command we are command to go out into the world to look for lost souls so that those lost souls now understand a lost soul. Your brother, your sister, your mother, your father can have a lost soul. If they have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, their soul is lost. That's what we're talking about when we say a lost soul. <laughs> not the person. It could be rich. It could be poor. It could be whatever it is. If that person has a soul that has not accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior, that person has a lost soul. So it's up to you if your soul is no longer lost and you have a, a soul that you know is going to go out of your body into eternity, into paradise, you have to tell someone else the same thing so you can't leave a lost soul back that you could have saved. What he's talking about when using the same analogy, if you see a blind person about to cast themselves and fall into a ditch and kill and take their life and you don't shout out, Joe, stop, 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 then you have your blood persons on your hands. So now if you have a, you've gained Jesus, Jesus Christ, you believe in Jesus Christ, it's going to be your Lord and Savior, you are obligated to tell someone else about it. It's just, it's just as simple. And you can't be a mom about it because if you do, then you are losing your own soul. You're, you're going right back to the place you could dock a dog returning to his vomit. So if your soul is no longer lost, if except Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and your next door neighbor or the person whosoever you meet don't don't know that you have a saved soul, then you had to shout out to that person. My soul is saved and here's how I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And that person who may not have a, 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 a the same soul as you have, so be lost, that person now becomes accepted by and accept Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior. Then now the victory is yours and now that person is now uh, the follower of Jesus Christ and you get the victory. <laughs> now the angels in heaven are shouting oh he or she told this lost soul about Jesus Christ and that person accepted Jesus Christ and now the angels in heaven are shouting because you have now done what you were commanded by Jesus to do. Moving on <clears throat> with this process because we're taking up too much time and the hours are far spent. I'm going to go now out of oh, chapter 17 and we're going to move out of that over to chapter 18. Now you see we're up at the top uh, on the topic at John 18 chapter 1 
uh, through 1841. Now this is where Pilate is now in the process of, of, of helping, uh, no, 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 well, I'm sorry, Judas, I'm sorry, not, not Pilate, but Judas is now conspiring. And I want to show that, that the hour had come within this hour. You had a conspiracy in this hour. The hour had come, but then the conspirators in this process are now conspiring to kill Jesus. Yep, Judas is as the primary one of the is the primary conspirator, or he's the son of perdition that you see back up in in the prayer that Jesus is praying. He said. Uh, that's the son of perdition, and that's Judas. Our Lord, all only ones that were lost were the son of perdition, and that was Judas. And Judas actually killed himself, committed suicide. So he had two two things upon him that was really no, not favorable in God's eye. First of all, he conspired to kill Jesus. And whenever you participate in a conspiracy, you are just like a Judas whosoever we are, and I'm going to use me, if I were to conspire with someone to do something to someone, it's a, I would be committing a conspiracy and I would become a Judas. I'm, I'm just uh, using me. If I were to do that, I would become a Judas because Judas conspired with the people who wanted to kill Jesus, but not out of ignorance. They wanted to kill Jesus and Judas knew who Jesus were, but he conspired and took money for in his conspiracy to do that. And throughout the Bible, there are conspiracies. And I'm telling to you today, within the governments in the world, or the regulators are conspiracies. And those conspiracies are not there uh, for you. Those conspiracies are like Satan. Satan leads to conspiracy. You can rest assured that if there is a, if there is a conspiracy, Jesus Christ is not leading a conspiracy or none of Jesus Christ's followers are leading a conspiracy. You can't be two things at one time. You can't be a conspirator and a, and a follower of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ don't cons conspire and his followers don't conspire. So if you f see a person, regulators or non-regulators, don't really matter whether they can be in the church, if they can be anywhere, a conspirator can be anywhere. And when a person conspires to do something, that person is like a Judas. And Judas is like a devil because a devil conspires to do things. And that's what took place where pride was kicked out of heaven conspiring because not just pride was kicked out, but one third of the angels that was conspiring with pride were kicked out. And right now we got three conspirators with, with all time, lying, lust, and pride. Those are the three conspirators at all times. The conspiracy of pride heads up the conspiracy of lust and lying. And we will lie to cover up our conspiracy or we will lust at something in our conspiracy and pride will not let me, talk about me, tell you that I've lied to you, tell you that I'm lusting for something that you have or lusting for you. I'm, I'm Pride will not let me correct myself. And that's what we're talking about. Pride is pride and pride was cast out of heaven and one third of the angels with pride was cast out. Those conspirators are still here today. And the male and the female that God formed or created that is up in his image in chapter uh, 1 verse uh, 26 through 31 of the book of Genesis when God said let us make man in our image. He created a man in his male and female in his image and his image is invisible and he gave them instructions. The first instruction was to multiply. So they are multiplying. They are still multiplying because God's image does not change and neither does God. So the male and female are still multiplying and have to in order to subdue the earth and those are one of their instructions was to, to do the earth. So if you are a conspirator or you know someone that, that is a conspirator, that person or you or me, uh, if we are conspirators, then we are under the subjection or the, the uh, auspices of the instructions that God gave to the male and female in his image that we will be destroyed. And that's what Satan is to be destroyed to by the male and the female God created in his image because he told them to subdue. That word subdue is in us today. If we see a Judas conspiring to do something, then we should subdue that Judas and stop that Judas from hurting an innocent person. We're moving on with this. 
but make sure you stop this information and study not just what you see here use your scripture use your bible to, to study it but make sure you get an understanding of john, john 18 1 through john 18 40 so you can see what took place after judas conspired to kill jesus and what peter did in denying jesus see peter was peter was also and so was thomas thomas was a non-believer if you understand what I'm saying, he did. He had to see proof and all like that. Even though Thomas was one of his disciples and Peter was one of his disciples, but Peter denied him as a disciple. He denied Christ. Judas, he conspired to kill him. If you can follow what I'm saying, these are people. But that's amazing blessing that you and I have is that God has no respect of person, and our persons we can be as dirty as dirt we can be dirtier than dirt if you can understand what i'm saying because god didn't take the dirt that he breathed into the breath of life into it. he took the dust from the dirt <laughs> the dirt is dirtier and we can be dirtier than dirt judas was dirtier than dirt to conspire to kill jesus and take the money that's why the dirt judas went out and killed himself Moving on with this in the Sunday school lesson, we're going to move on because we're almost at an hour. I'm going to go kind of fast now. Well, moving out of 18, we're going to 19 because all this in, in, the, in your scripture, all it is is there for you to study for. What this lesson is about here is to let you and I know about the hour, regardless of when we move and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Our hour has come for us to get out of that dead body, that dead soul. And now our soul is now new. We become a new creature. The hour is now up. Now our hour may be because our hours are different than God's hour. You see, one day with God is a thousand of our years. We don't have that kind of time to wait a thousand years to get uh, accepted and to accept Jesus Christ. The moment that we accept Jesus Christ, our hour has started. But now if I'm 17 and I accept Jesus Christ, my hour may be a little longer than I am if I'm 97 and I accept Jesus Christ, if you can hear what I'm saying. There's a strong possibility that the 97 could outlive the 17 because the 17 could accept Jesus Christ and then turn around the next day and not meet 18, if you can hear what I'm saying. The 97 can do the same thing. He can accept Jesus Christ and his hour now has started and he may not make it to 100, if you can say what I'm saying. But yet and still, whatever day you and I, regardless of who you are, whatever age you are, whatever gender you are, whatever race you are, once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, our hour starts. Our maturity in the hour goes and as we get stronger and stronger with our walk with jesus christ now we can tell another weaker person about jesus christ and that person's hour which come now we pass that person up and don't tell that person about getting his hour started then our command that jesus christ has commanded us to do is followed up on us and that makes us backslide if you can know what i'm saying back to the vomit that's what i'm saying Moving on with this lesson <laughs> now, uh, moving on 18, we're not going to go into the whole thing in this 18, but we are talking about what took place with the Jews conspiring to kill Jesus. The Jews conspiring, the Pharisees and Sadducees and etc. They are now conspiring to kill Jesus in 19. Okay. And they did, <laughs> they did kill Jesus in 19 or conspire to kill Jesus in 19. Cause we'll see what took place in them. All this is in previous lessons and also in the prior lesson entitled The Expedience of Jesus Christ. That's in that lesson, The Expedience of Jesus Christ. This lesson here is to cover the hour, to let you know when your hour come. That's what this lesson is all about, to let you know if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it doesn't really more. It doesn't really matter. This lesson is for you to let you 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 and you know that your hour is come your hour is come if you accept jesus christ it has already passed but if you hour and you see another person who has not accepted jesus christ as their lord and savior and you don't tell that person about jesus christ then your hour has come for you to go back because you have now backslided if you know what i'm saying it's not a it's not a an option it's a command <laughs> 
if you know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not military uh, 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 savvy, but I do believe and I see when an officer gives an, a command, it's a command. And Jesus Christ is a Lord's officer from God. And he gave me a command to go out into the world and tell the lost soul about salvation. Salvation is to be accepted, to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and walk in his will. And we pray, Father, I will that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am, where I am, that they may behold my glory. I will, I will that they also whom you have given me. So if you are now accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you know now that you have been given to Jesus Christ by the Lord God himself. So once he said, I will that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. They now, you now are beholding the glory that Jesus Christ came to give you. And you can't go do nothing else except live according to the will and commandments of Jesus Christ now. Because you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior. And your command is to tell another lost soul that has not accepted him about the victory of accepting him. Because the soul is dead. Adam and Eve killed her soul. And she gave her debts. He gave her husband the same thing that she knew already. She knew what Adam didn't know. She knew. That's why God in Corinthians, under Paul's guidance, Paul, Apostle Paul, he's telling us what she cannot do, even though Joel is giving us something different. But what Joel is talking about and what Paul is talking about are two different things. <laughs> Two different things, just like in Corinthians. He called them to do this. He called one to do that. He called one to do that. It's a whole lot of difference in what Paul is talking about. It really is. And I pray God to get an understanding of that. I'm not, not part of this lesson. But this lesson here is about for you to go to a lost soul and let their lost soul know that if you accept Jesus Christ right now as your Lord and Savior, then your hour has come. That's what this is about. When Jesus Christ is letting you and I know that the hour has come. Now, his hour is getting dimmer in this lesson here because the closer we get to chapter 21 in this lesson here, that's called, we're talking about six chapters, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. That was that hour that we're talking about. And his hour is over because he's now died. Okay. They pierced him in the side. He's now bled water and blood. Now his spirit is out of his body. And now he goes through the processes in 2019 and 20 to show that he talked to other people. He showed himself three times after he had been taken out of the tomb. He showed himself two or three times. And that's what we talk about in this lesson here. And I'm going to cut this short. And <laughs> I keep saying that. But we're going to, all we talk about in this lesson is the hour is come. Whatever hour. Now, what we really are emphasizing in this is what the Holy Spirit is putting in my thoughts to put into this video for you to understand and go back and look in your Bible and see what was the Holy Spirit going to tell you about this hour. Because Jesus Christ did tell his disciples that the hour is come. Yes, is come. And now he go and pray to his father. He tell his father, the hour is come to glorify your son that your son may also glorify you as you have given him power over all flesh that he shall give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is life eternal that they may know you the only true God in Jesus Christ for whom he have since I've glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work for what you gave me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify you, me, with your own self with the glory that I had with you before the world was. So now he's trying to give me that glory that he had with the father before the world was and once i accept him as my lord and savior my hour has come to live my life now in eternity in the paradise of god my hour is come for me to get out of this pit i am because if i don't accept him as my lord and savior my soul can only go to the pit so now once i accept him as my lord and savior i my soul no longer have to go down into the pit. I can now live in the paradise of God in eternity as opposed to living in the pit in eternity. I got two places to go, my soul does, when it leaves this place we call body. It has two places to go, in the pit in eternity or in the paradise in eternity. Those are only two places my soul can go. And I am obligated, commanded by God to tell anyone about the living soul. And what the soul, all souls are living. All souls are living souls. 
and God has no respect a person's body that the soul live in because the soul is the soul of God. It's the, it's the eternity of God and God has no respect of your beautiful body with your beautiful eyes and your beautiful shape and you pulling all your bosom down so people can see your breast in your bosom. God has no respect of you. You're not helping God you're walking around if though you this big or this in the bag of potato chips, Mr. P uh, Mr. Perfect Man. God has no respect of you. You're just a piece of dirt. <laughs> Part it on and I can put paint on dirt. You know, I can put anything. I can put lipstick on dirt and it's still dirt. And that's what we're talking about in this. But if you want your hour to come, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yeah, you John, you married to Bill. Yeah, but you are not. You are dead. Bill's, Bill is dead and so are you. Your souls are dead. You can't become a living soul in, in paradise of God. God has already told you that he's grieved over your action, Bill and Bill, or Francis and Francis. You can't do that. I'm just trying to tell you, I, uh, hey, my sins are worse than yours. But I'm trying to tell you, now that I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I know not to do what the dog do is go back and lick in the vomit that I've already vomited up. You see what I'm saying? I've given up to vomit. I've given up Satan. I've given him up. He vomited to me. I'm not going to go back and take him again. That's 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 contradictory. I'm not going to do that. That's what I'm trying to say in this lesson. This is a Sunday school lesson for today's class. But what we're talking about is your hour. Your hour may not have come. It's time for you to get an understanding of what is meant by what Jesus said. The hour is come. If you don't accept Jesus Christ, I'm going to say it over and over again. If you don't accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then your hour would not have come. But once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, your hour has now come. You don't, you don't know as much about him as you should, but you now walk with him. And the more you walk with him, the better you're going to understand him. Now, we know what happened to Judas. He walked with Jesus. We know what Peter did. He walked with Jesus. And Peter was a smart rascal. He knew that who Jesus was. Because when Jesus asked them, who do man say I am? Peter's response was that you are the son of the living God. And Jesus' response to Peter was only my father could have revealed that to you. So Jesus knew that Peter knew who he was, or then Jesus knew who Peter was because Jesus also told Peter, you're going to deny me three times. <laughs> and he did. Peter denied Jesus three times. Now, you see what I'm talking about? Peter turned back to the vomit. If you can hear that analogy, what I'm saying, Peter turned back, even though Peter knew who Jesus was. Judas knew who Jesus was, but Judas conspired to kill Jesus. Hey, once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, don't go back because your soul is now headed for paradise. You don't have to live in the pit any longer. But if you don't accept Jesus Christ, you're already in the pit anyway. But once you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then out of the pit. We're moving on. Now we look here. We're just going to go inside that because you can see that I'm using the same information that was used when we use and talking about the expedience of Jesus Christ. This is the same information. It's from the same books. It's from the same lesson. All we're doing in this Sunday school lesson is talking about the hour is come. <laughs> when Jesus Christ's hour came, he had witnesses. And these are the three witnesses that we're talking about. You see in the red, the three witnesses. Those are the witnesses that was at the cross when his hour came. And during that hour, they witnessed what was going on in that six days and that six day hour. Now, the six Jesus hour was six days because Jesus hour was the six days with God. And one hour with God is six days. If you can hear what I'm saying. And one hour with you ain't not six days. One hour with you is just that, you know, it ain't six days. We don't say it that way. But now we're talking here by these three witnesses and to show you why they're still there. OK, it's because of what place in this hour that took Jesus to come and to give up the spirit, the blood and the water in order for you and I to gain eternal life. And he prayed to his father that I was come to glorify your son, that some may also glorify you as you have given him power over all flesh, that he shall give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And that's what we talk about in this. We're going to move on out of this now. We're going now to uh, chapter 21, which is the end of this process. And we can see in this, this process, it, it is now over. Now Jesus is coming back to show himself to his disciples. He's showing himself to his disciples 
now that he has his hour has come he's now died and now he's come back <laughs> from the dead and now he's showing himself to three times to his disciples and one thing he went him went out and fixed breakfast for them that was the last thing he did he fixed breakfast and they went out fishing all night long and then catching the thing and jesus called them to come to the shore and when they went to the shore they saw that which they didn't acknowledge that they knew it was jesus according to this lesson here they didn't acknowledge that they knew it was jesus but yet they still had, had bread and bread fish and bread on the shore of the river i'm going to close this i'm going to pray father that i was coming to glorify your son that's what we have been talking about is that the hour has come i'm going to end this presentation i pray in jesus name that you share this with as many people as possible to let them know that the hour is come and so when you share it according to commandments of jesus christ when you share it then your hour will have come your command is your hour you're commanded in that hour to tell a lost soul about jesus christ so you tell lottie daughter and everybody and you don't know whose soul is get but you may be talking to a person who has a lost soul so make sure you share it don't try to emphasize who you think is going to have it or not you don't know god don't have no respect to person and neither should we have a respect to person thank you god bless you i love you bye bye